Yeah, 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 he did that. Okay. Oh. Uh, hello. Oh. Welcome to the Transfiguration Teen Mass. Um, hope you guys are having a good day. If you are a teen attending this Mass, please come over and sit in the teen section right over there. Additionally, the bathrooms on the first floor have been finished, renovated, and now they're being able to use. Uh, the second floor bathrooms are being renovated currently. On August 18th, we have a youth group night from 6 to 8 in the FLC. If you're a middle or a high schooler, you're very welcome to come over and have a great time with us. And please stand up and ask your neighbor for any prayer intentions. And now, will you please join us in singing as we begin this celebration.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord with you. Amen. Happy Feast Day, Transfiguration. <laughs> the Feast of Transfiguration is normally celebrated on the 6th of August, but today we move it to celebrate it on the Feast of the Weekend. So, happy, happy uh, Feast Day. Together this day, let us seek God's abundant mercy and peace. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. You feed us in your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. And you will come again in glory. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption, grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the book were open. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one, like a son of man, received dominion, 
glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages served him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths. When we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we have been eyewitness of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from the God Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from the heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord.
this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to me. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzlingly white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. I need to make a correction to today's gospel. There's a, a falsehood that is written at the end. As they were coming down the mountain, he charged them not to relate anything what they had seen, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So the three of them kept the matter to themselves. Liars. There is no way that they experienced this moment of transfiguration you have to understand where the transfiguration took place. Jesus ministered at the Sea of Galilee. He called his apostles out of those places, and he began a journey to Jerusalem. And Mount Tabor, where we believe the transfiguration occurred, is on that route from Galilee to Jerusalem. And this mountain is not easy to get up, even on a bus, let alone walking up the mountain. So they get up to the top and Jesus changes so brightly that it says, oh, it's, it's just amazing. It's back in the other gospel uh, proclamations of the same story, they fell down. And then a voice comes <laughs> and says, this is my son. Listen to him. Now, if it would happen today, everyone would have been with their phones videoing it and uploading it to every single social media tool available, if there was a signal. But the video definitely would have been happening, right? You know, 90-year-old people would have had their phones out, right? And you can't tell me that they didn't go down the mountain because who was at the bottom of the mountain? The rest of the apostles, right? The other nine that were not chosen to go up with Jesus besides Peter, James, and John. The other nine were at the bottom. And can you imagine these three coming down from the top of the mountain? Oh my God, can you believe what happened? We were the three chosen? Oh my God. And we can't tell anybody about it? Oh my God. And they get down to the, they're walking down to the bottom of the mountain. The other nine are going, oh, finally they made it. And they said, what would they have said? What would the nine have said to them? This is human interaction. What happened up there? 
Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. We went up and had a falafel and some wine, and that was it. No big deal. No. Now, they might have waited for Jesus to walk ahead a little bit, but they would have went, we'll tell you later. We'll give you the scoop later. We have some video of it. They could not have kept that kind of experience in. Because what happened in the transfiguration? They were called by Jesus to the Sea of Galilee. They left everything to follow him. Family, their connections, their jobs, to go to Jerusalem with this guy, Jesus. Believing that he has something. <laughs> and now they saw it and heard it. His, his appearance changed. The voice from the cloud, this is my beloved son. That's kind of hard to confuse, right? I mean, in Vegas, you could probably do an amazing magic show to make this all look great. This wasn't Vegas. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And they came down from the mountain and they continued that journey. Yes, they were questioning what he meant by rising from the dead, right? Makes sense, but they weren't probably questioning what they experienced on the top of the mountain. It confirmed for them what they believed to be able to follow him from where they were comfortable to where ultimately they were not going to be comfortable. We are also called to transfigured because the transfiguration wasn't about Jesus. It wasn't like Jesus went up the mountain and goes, I really don't know who I am. I hope I find out. I was told I was going to, I was received an email and my father said he's going to let me know what's going on. That wasn't the case. He knew who he was and what he was called to do in his life. Transfiguration was for those three eyes at the bottom. Peter, James, and John. It was confirmation for them. It was reassurance to them. Not to Jesus. So why are we here every week? Why are we here every week? Why do we come up the mountain on the property of transfiguration week after week? I hope we come to experience something. I hope it's not an obligation to say, well, I gotta go to church, five o'clock's last time to go, gotta get here. I hope it's saying, I wanna experience something. And we can come up to this mountaintop moment and experience the very body of Christ, bread and wine that becomes for us his very body and blood for us. We can hear his word proclaimed. And they were called to come down from the mountain to continue the journey of life. But different. Different. Peter, James, and John were not the same men that went up the mountain that came down from the mountain. There's no way they could have been the same. They went, oh, well, it was just a good light show, and he probably had a speaker behind him and a Bluetooth thing set up. And mm -mm. They came down differently, renewed, to continue that journey. We're called to do the same here. Now, sometimes we come to Mass and we go, oh, Father Eric, oh, we're going to be here forever, and homily, long homily, and... Oh, they're going to sing that song again. Oh, did you hear that a couple weeks ago? Oh, or someone's in my seat and you know, it's, oh, it's too hot, it's too cold. Hot, cold, just right, not right. Well, I hope we can get out of here on time and go do our next thing. There are days that that happens. For me too. 
But there's other days when we should hear something. Maybe it was in the exchange of the prayer before Mass and someone asked us for something very important in their life to pray for. Maybe it was in a verse or a word that happened in a song that we heard at Mass. Maybe after three years of me being your pastor, I actually said something that touched your heart. Maybe it was in the word of God that was proclaimed that you heard countless times before that you went, ah, I never heard that phrase in that reading before. Something happened to me in the exchange and simple conversation before mass. Maybe it was in the parking lot or maybe someone said something that confirmed for me something that I've been dealing with and questioning all week. I know that Peter, James, and John the other night were going, is this the right guy we should be following? Should we have really given up everything to follow him? And now he wants, to go, wants us to go up a mountain? Jeez, really? Without a taxi, without a donkey, walking up the mountain? Is this the right one? And so we can come here sometimes and go, why am I coming here? What's the point? Week after week. We need to be open to transfiguration, transfigurating experience that can't happen here. Maybe it's after Mass in the chapel. Maybe it's going to be after Mass in the plaza when you stop by and have a little treat for the feast day. Maybe it's just in sitting here going, Lord, I need to hear your voice. And he actually says something to you, Judith. We need to come to the mountain. Be open to what God is going to do in and through us. And then we've got to leave. You know, we hear Peter goes, let's build some tents. Let's hang out for a while. She's like, no, we don't need, <laughs> we don't need to hang out. We, gotta, we got some stuff to do here. This is just one stop among many along our journey of life. Let's go. Maybe it's in the reception of the Eucharist that we come forward week after week and receive, but maybe this day it's something different that happens. Maybe we just pause as we receive the Eucharist and we hear the body of Christ, the minister places the host in our hand, and we just pause for a moment and go, my Lord and my God, thank you for your gift to me. Whatever it may be, there can be a transformative experience and it should happen. Not every time, perhaps. Not every moment. But we should be open to experiencing that here. So we can go back out of that world and do what? As we come down from the mountain, what do we want to do with what? If, they, if we were the three apostles, what would we want to do first And coming down from the mountain? Think they were looking for the Starbucks? What would they want to do? We talked about it at the beginning of the homily. What would they want to do? Tell everyone about it. Do we leave here? Do we tell everybody about it? Or do we go, oh, thank God it's over. I'm out. Sunday, check. Or do we go, I want to share what I experienced. I heard something different today, or I saw something different, or as I was watching Father Eric hold up the host in his hand, I saw it differently. And I want to share it. Even if you just talk about it when you go home, or maybe you share it with a friend and say, you know, I went to Mass this Sunday, and God spoke to me. Or something happened. That good news needs to be shared. We can't keep that in. And how God is at work in us. 
and how he gives us what we need along the journey of life every day. Yes, Jesus was transfigured, but not for him. He was transfigured for us. And we are to come down from the mountain, changed, renewed, confirmed. Not in the sacrament of confirmation necessarily, but confirmed in what we believe so we go out in the world and share the power of God in our lives. It is good news. But we got to be open to experiencing what God is offering to us. It's happening. It happens all the time. Are you willing to see the power of God in us? Let us now profess our faith. I Let us offer our prayers before our Heavenly Father. That the Holy Spirit may continue to guide the church in truth while her light shines more brightly in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may seek the counsel of God and trust in his ways as they govern their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our parish on this, our feast day, May our vision remain clearly focused on encountering, encountering Christ, and may, may we strive to do better. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all will grow in respect for God's gift of life, especially in those who are most vulnerable and cannot care for themselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord for our loved ones who live in hopelessness, May they be inspired by the beauty and light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are ill, especially Father Fernando, may they know that in Christ hope and tranquility can be found. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the special intention for Mary Lou Weekly, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For our loved ones who have died, especially Mel Cho and Janetta Jackson, may they rest in God's light. We pray to the Lord. And for our own intentions held in the silence of your heart, along with the prayer requests shared with our brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, we turn to you 
We offer the prayers publicly and privately. We seek to experience you in a whole new way, to truly be transformed by you so as to live the life you are calling us to live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. On mountain peak stands alone in glory blazing. Let us, if we dare to speak, join the saints and angels praising. This is God's beloved Son. This is God's Trembling at his feet we saw Moses and Elijah speaking All the prophets and the law Shout through the joyful greeting This is God's beloved Son This is God's beloved 
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, the offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stains of sin, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed the glory in the presence of chosen witnesses, and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head, and so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and work of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy you never cease to gather to your people gather a people to yourself so that from the rise of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was in, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, said the blessing, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. There. 
Lord. For, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Peter, James, and John, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory, John, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have made your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you, have, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers and to all who were pleasing to their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we'll always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance of your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We have a treat after Mass out in the plaza. We have a little cake to celebrate our feast day. And we have Amalia, who's going to be offering an opportunity, an invitation for us all. You can just use the ample mic. Hi everyone, um, I'm Amalia Coffey. Um, I have been a parishioner of Transfiguration for pretty much my entire life, um, on and off a few years. Um, the years that were off were when I didn't live in Atlanta. Um, and with that, I um, am a small group leader here at Transfiguration, and I've also been a small group leader and or prep teacher on and off since about middle school, which is wild. Um, there are some people sitting in this room that I literally taught when I was a middle schooler um, and they were in kindergarten. Let, don't do that math, please. Um, but I love being a parishioner of Transfiguration and with that, I love being a small group leader. Um, being somebody who grew up at this parish in particular, I was thinking about it and aside from baptism, I received every one of my sacraments that I've ever had at this parish. And that also means that there are people who are at this parish and there are people who are sitting in this room tonight who have literally prepared me for those sacraments. Um, and so when I think about why I want to be a small group leader or why I've been a prep teacher in the past, what a cool opportunity it is to really be a part of that formative experience of our teens, right? Um, and so I do 11th and 12th grade. There are two small group leaders per grade. 11th and 12th is a little bit different. We do it together. There's four of us. Um, it's a lot of fun. And when we change from the traditional prep style of teaching to more of the small group style, um, it was eye-opening to me. And it's been a really, really cool experience because we've kind of gone from just kind of teaching the catechism to really hearing what your teens and your children have to say. And they have a lot to say. Um, they have a lot of questions that we do our best to answer. Um, they have a lot of thoughts. They have a lot of opinions. And um, it's a safe space for them to ask us, to talk about it with us, to um, have real life discourse with people who may agree with them or may not agree with them. 
and that's okay um, because what we're taught to do within our faith is to be curious and to have questions. Um, and we want our teens to feel comfortable doing that from the time that, you know, your children start as a first grader or kindergartner all the way up through 11th and 12th grade when we're preparing them for college. Um, because once they leave here, they're on their own, right? Um, you know, you're there to guide them and we're there to always be there for them in whatever way we can. Um, but we want to prepare them the best way that we can to continue their faith journey outside of these walls. Um, and so, yeah, so I extend an invite for you guys to join and be faith leaders. I believe we still need, like, at least last week, this is the last mass that we're kind of doing this spiel. Um, I think we needed, like, 16 last weekend. I'm sure people have signed up today, um, but we would love to have you be small group leaders. Again, each grade has two leaders. Um, for specific needs, other than small group leaders, we have food crew or building reception. Please see us in the narthex in the foyer after church. Um, and then also there's a mini retreat next weekend, Saturday in the morning and Sunday in the afternoon um, for us to spend time together, be in communion together as catechists, uh, as small group leaders, and we would love to have you. What's the commitment? What's the commitment? So great question. Great question. Um, so the commitment is it's not every weekend. Um, with small group leaders and how things have changed over the last couple of years, um, this opportunity and our new small group kind of like way we're doing this is you have time at home where you're working together in your families to learn the lesson, to have conversation, to pray together. And then there's opportunities for you to come to um, church and have this with your small group where you would you would chat one another. It's about one to two times a month. Don't quote me on that because some months are different than others. Um, but it's definitely not every weekend, which um, makes it much more manageable, especially for those of us who are already very busy. Time. Time. time is after 5 p.m. mass. Well, um, well, how much time? So you said twice oh, how a much month. Time? So. It's only it's about an hour, so yeah. it's really not, yeah, it's, 90, it's 90, not. 90 minutes. What'd you say? 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Okay, well, it's 90 minutes. So there's dinner first, and then you have small group um, afterwards, which that changes so the shear. So we feed yeah, them? Yeah, change the shear. We feed them. We do feed them. We feed you, we feed your family, we feed. With some grub. Yeah. Anything else? Did I miss anything? And they're going to be, it's another way to help be transfigured, right? So they may not feel that they're qualified, but maybe something happens in that experience of them sharing the faith. A thousand percent. Again, um, you're surrounded by a group of people who are more than willing to um, shepherd you through this experience. Um, if you've never done anything like this before, we're here to help. We're here to support. Therese is incredibly helpful. Joyce loves to answer questions. Like there's, there's no shortage um, of support from the people here and also the other cell group leaders who are doing this. Thanks, Amalia. Yeah, thank you. Another opportunity to learn about our faith is this Thursday evening about the creed from Master Catechist Joe Von Kennel. He'll be here this Thursday night. Uh, sign up for that on the Adult Faith Formation webpage. Next weekend is the Blood Drive, August 11th from 8.30 to 3.30. Those who can give blood Please come out and give. If you've never given blood before, uh, they'll be gentle. And you get barbecue and nutter butters and a shirt or a blanket or some other gift and a gift card. Mm. And if you don't want to be paid for your blood, just give me the code. I'll receive the gift card on your behalf. <laughs> Anybody celebrating their birthday in the month of August? Any anniversaries this month? Happy anniversary. <laughs> You're celebrating by yourself? No. But your husband's not celebrating? No. There you go. <laughs> Any visitors with us this evening? No visitors? Please stand. Your names? 
Caroline and Esteban. And where you're from? Albany. So you're, you moved from Albany. Are you church shopping or are you just... <laughs> this is it? You might, what do you mean you might be coming here? <laughs> there are no other choices. So you're joining the parish? Uh, they'll be happy to help you in the narthex, that information. <laughs> Okay, awesome, welcome. Your name? Paige, where are you from? Mayretta? You just stopped by? No? You're here for, what are you here for? Somebody said come along and you said okay. That's great, well welcome, nice to have you here. All right, the Lord be with you. Myra, when is your birthday? Wednesday. Which Wednesday? You said Wednesday. Monday, Monday, this Wednesday. You guys don't have to clap for all it does is encourage behavior. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God.